Hi, Dr. Bob Strohecker here in our Mansfield office. Um, today we're going to talk about um, glaucoma and the shape change that occurs with this disease process. We're just going to show you some uh, digital images that have been captured on myself and some of our patients. And we can kind of, with this, demonstrate the physical change that actually occurs to the nerve inside of the eye with the glaucomatous process. In the, in the easiest uh, of definitions, glaucoma is typically a high pressure in the eye. And with this coinciding high pressure, we get shape change to the nerve over time. Let me demonstrate this to you. This instrument is called an HRT. It's a, it's a retinal tomograph. It actually uses a laser to scan and put thousands of points um, on the optic nerve. And with this, it, it's very sensitive and detects minute changes in structure over time. With glaucoma, as this structure uh, of the nerve changes, you start losing uh, sensitivity peripherally first and then an end-stage glaucoma, you end up losing actually all sight once the eye is basically choked off over time. And we'll see this on some of our scans. Let's look at my nerve. And as we, as we look at my nerve, this is the total diameter of the optic nerve. The, in, the middle here of my cupping or dishing out is only about 20% of the total nerve diameter. Now if we look at another patient that is actually being treated for glaucoma, their nerve, or their dished out section, is almost 80% of the total nerve diameter. This is what we again, again called the cup. And over time, this is what we see changing. And this is what definitely determines if an individual is having glau glaucomatous changes to their eyes. Shape change to the optic nerve over time. It isn't a high pressure, necessarily. It's shape change. If you have this, you definitely have glaucoma. The treatment, like we had mentioned, is a series of drops. If drops don't control the eye pressure and the shape, and eventual shape change, then we'll opt for surgical techniques to lower the eye pressure and hopefully maintain stability of that optic nerve so that we don't see this progression over time. Typically, most glaucomas are treated almost always with a drop therapy. This used to be a lot more difficult than it is today. Some of the newer generation drugs in particular, the three that we see here are all prostaglandin, what are called prostaglandin analogs, and they're very effective uh, in reducing the internal eye pressure on a one-day dosing. Typically, the dose for any of these three drops would be taken at nighttime, one drop at bedtime in, in either eye or the affected eye. Some individuals have glaucoma in only one eye, and they'll use it only in one eye, but you know, most people have it, will have it in, in two eyes. Uh, these, individual, uh, these uh, individual drops here, azopt and cosopt, uh, reduce are actually carbonic anhydrase inhibiting drops. And with these drops, they actually affect the chemical cycle that produces the fluid within the eye. The first class of drops actually facilitate outflow or help fluid move out of the eye. These guys actually help reduce the production or the amount of fluid that's actually um, being manufactured within the eye. The third class of drugs is the Alfgan-P and this, this drug also affects the chemical pathway within the eye and by disrupting that chemical pathway it decreases the amount of fluid being produced within the eye thus lowering the eye pressure. It's usually used in adjunctive therapy that is it's usually an add-on drug we don't, always have, we don't always get the pressure lowering effect by using just one drop in, in many individuals and oftentimes it requires that we add one, two, and up to three drops. If you're not getting a good response with the three drops in one eye, then usually surgery is the next alternative for, the, for lowering the pressure.